Hey there, space enthusiasts. Get ready to blast off into the cosmos with us. Welcome to Spaceverse, where the universe is our playground and curiosity knows no bounds. Join us on an interstellar adventure as we dive into the depths of space, uncovering its mysteries and marvels. From the secrets of black holes to the landscapes of alien worlds, we're here to ignite your imagination and expand your cosmic horizons. With mind-blowing visuals, expert insights, and the thrill of exploration, Spaceverse is your ticket to the ultimate cosmic journey. So strap in, hit that subscribe button, and let's embark on an epic voyage together into the vast unknown of Spaceverse. SpaceX is embarking on a monumental project while NASA deploys a protective shield on the moon. Sierra conducts trials for a space descent pod, and we bid farewell to the Delta IV heavy rocket. In a seemingly routine pep talk to SpaceX staff, Elon Musk hinted at a groundbreaking revelation regarding the future of the Starship. It wasn't just about the next phase of development for their powerful rocket prototypes. Elon outlined a visionary plan for enabling human life to span across multiple planets. Although presented through a simple infographic, it unveils intricate details beyond Elon's spoken words. It delineates the Envision progression of the already colossal Starship, introducing two new iterations, each amplifying payload capacity and thus thrust, propellant load, and size. The second version exhibits subtle modifications from the current prototype. It's marginally taller, with approximately an additional meter on the booster and two meters on the upper stage. This extension on the ship segment facilitates a substantial increase in propellant load, resulting in a thrust boost from 1,250 tons to 1,600 tons. This enhancement significantly contributes to elevating the overall payload capacity to over 100 tons for low-Earth orbit missions. Beneath the numerical upgrades, intentional design adjustments are apparent in these renderings. Starting from the nose, there's a noticeable sharpening. The nose cone tapers more dramatically down to its tip, likely emphasized by elongated and narrower wing flaps. This trend extends to the base of the ship, where the wing flaps protrude slightly further, and the heat shield tiles cover a larger portion of the hull. Moving downward, the inner stage has undergone a complete redesign featuring notably increased ventilation space for the hot stage separation, reminiscent of the Soviet-style inner stage connection seen on the old N1. Additionally, the booster grid fins have been repositioned downward and farther from the inner stage, likely aimed at minimizing damage during a hot stage event, potentially leading to improved booster control during re-entry. At the base of the Super Heavy, SpaceX illustrates the removal of the outer shield around the Raptor engines, possibly reflecting a best part is no part philosophy. Version 2 appears to serve as the Envision standard for a finalized iteration of the Starship. Version 3, on the other hand, presents itself as a true behemoth. Based solely on the figures Elon provided during the presentation, V3 towers at a staggering 150 meters, surpassing the current launch tower at Starbase. The elongated appearance of the V3 ship, nearly 20 meters taller than V1, might seem almost comical, but there's a clear rationale behind it. Starship 3 is designed to accommodate nearly double the propellant of current prototypes. Unlike V2, SpaceX intends to augment V3's vacuum engines, doubling their number from 3 to 6. This enhancement will elevate the thrust of the ship stage to a staggering 2,700 tons of force, more than double that of the current prototype. Consequently, the capability to deploy over 2,200 metric tons to low Earth orbit will be achieved, and with orbital refilling, this payload can be transported to destinations as far as the Moon and Mars. Undoubtedly, SpaceX faces a dawning journey before realizing this formidable version of the Starship. Recent test flights of the V-1 prototype have yet to accomplish a controlled descent, and the company is vigorously constricting more test articles for a demanding year aimed at preparing the current version for use by the time of the scheduled Artemis 3 moon landing in 2026. Additionally, V-3 will necessitate a more robust launch facility. While a taller tower is inevitable, with nearly 3,000 extra tons of force at liftoff, it remains uncertain whether the new deluge system on the orbital launch mount could prevent potential damage to the Boca Chica coast. Elon emphasizes that the impetus behind developing new Starship variants, aside from achieving in parallel power, is to continue driving down the cost of each vehicle. Musk envisions the team targeting about $2 million per launch of a fully reusable Starship V3, significantly undercutting the current estimated $60-$67 million price tag for launching the Falcon 9, SpaceX's current workhorse. 
While it may be premature to anticipate Starship V3's arrival before V2 is even constructed or the prototype achieves its inaugural landing, the concept of such dramatic scaling while significantly reducing relative costs is undeniably astonishing. Lunar missions come with numerous hazards even before reaching the surface, but one critical issue NASA must address before establishing permanent residency on the Moon is lunar dust. Composed largely of glassy silicates and lacking oxygen or flowing water for erosion, lunar regolith remains coarse and abrasive, akin to Henry Fine sand. Compounding the issue, the dust carries an electrostatic charge, rendering conventional removal methods ineffective as the particles cling, exacerbating damage. Like sand, lunar dust permeates everywhere, infiltrating gas seals, hatches, and even causing allergic-like reactions among Apollo astronauts, dubbed lunar hay fever. Subsequent studies revealed inhalation of moon dust could lead to various lung complications. With this knowledge and a weary eye on their forthcoming Artemis crewed missions to the lunar surface, NAST revisited an old concept, the electric curtain. Originally conceived in 1967, NASA engineers proposed employing opposing charges to repel electrostatic dust particles, a safer alternative to brushes or vacuums. Although the idea never materialized for the Apollo missions, since 2004, NASA has been refining a modern iteration known as the Electrodynamic Dust Shield. Using a few clear electrodes, the system creates a gentle electric field that can push moon dust away from almost anything. Spacesuits are in obvious use, but it can also protect delicate solar panels, heat radiators, and camera lenses. Testing for the EDS started in 2019, where it was put on 12 test panels made of different materials and some modern spacesuit fabric. But the EDS has already been tested on the moon too. When Intuitive Machines sent their Otis lander to the moon in February, it brought along some experiments, including camera lenses with a prototype of the EDS. Even though the lander tipped over, they still managed to gather data from a couple of experiments, including the new dust shield system. NASA is planning to send a tech demo of the EDS with a mission for their CLPS initiative later this year, managed by Firefly Aerospace. Dealing with moon dust might not seem like a big deal until your equipment starts getting damaged and your astronauts can stop sneezing. So if we want to set up a base on the moon or anywhere else with dust and no atmosphere, we need systems like the EDS as soon as possible. It's a big moment as the United Launch Alliance said goodbye to its Delta IV rocket on Tuesday, April 9th. The Delta IV, a powerful rocket, took off for its final mission carrying a secret payload for the National Reconnaissance Office, probably a spy satellite. This mission marked the end not just of the Delta IV Heavy, but of the whole Delta rocket family. The Delta IV has been around since 2002, mostly doing jobs for the U.S. Air Force. Later, it started doing other types of missions too, especially after Boeing handed it over to the United Launch Alliance in 2006. The Delta IV Heavy, known for its three big boosters and a wide upper stage, could carry much heavier stuff into space compared to the regular Delta IV. It flew 16 times, with one mission having some problems. The Delta IV's retirement was planned for a while, as the United Launch Alliance built a new rocket called the Vulcan to replace it. Even though the Delta rockets served for 22 years with all the improvements in rockets lately, it was time to say goodbye to them. Sierra Space is making waves with its latest innovation, the Ghost System, which sounds like something straight out of a first-person shooter game. This system aims to revolutionize the delivery of critical supplies to remote locations worldwide, boasting the ability to accomplish this feat in just 90 minutes. The concept behind Ghost is intriguing, envisioning a network of prepackaged and sealed pods stationed in low-Earth orbit. These pods, resembling something out of a sci-fi movie, can be loaded with a variety of essential items ranging from disaster relief supplies and medicine to emergency food and even weaponry and equipment. When the need arises, the ghost system springs into action, activating the closest pod and initiating its descent back to Earth. Equipped with an umbrella-like fabric heat shield to protect its payload, the pod utilizes a deceleration device to slow down its orbit, ensuring a controlled descent. The goal is for the pod to land within 100 yards of its intended target coordinates. Remarkably, Sierra Space has already conducted initial drop tests to validate the system's feasibility. These tests included evaluating terminal velocity from heights of 2,000 feet, parachute deployments from 4,000 feet, and even experimenting with a shield separation mechanism for alternative landing profiles. The Ghost capsules are designed to have a lifespan of approximately five years, positioning the system as a reliable contingency plan for emergency situations. 
Sierra Space, known for its work on the innovative Dream Chaser space planes, is leveraging its expertise in space technologies to bring GOES to fruition. While Sierra Space currently relies on partnerships with other rocket companies like ULA for launches, the company's forward-thinking approach is evident in its strategic positioning within the market. With heavyweights like SpaceX and Rocket Lab focusing on reusable systems for larger payloads, Sierra Space saw an opportunity to address a niche need for rapid delivery of smaller items to remote locations. While Sierra Space may not have the capability to transport massive payloads like SpaceX envisions, its ability to swiftly deliver essential supplies to any spot on Earth within 90 minutes demonstrates a level of agility and innovation that sets it apart in the aerospace industry. Indeed, Sierra Space's Ghost system represents a clever and forward-looking solution to the challenges of emergency logistics. And that's it. Thanks for joining us on Spaceverse. Today, we've explored some exciting developments in space technology. From Sierra Space's groundbreaking Ghost system, promising to revolutionize emergency supply delivery, to the bittersweet farewell of the Delta IV rocket, marking the end of an era in space exploration. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates on the latest space news and innovations. Until next time, keep looking up.